Hello, my name is Emma, and I'm here to preview the 240 study guide that will help you get in the classroom. If you're ready to see the real thing, click the link right here, right now. Or click the link in the description to take a free practice test. This video will prepare you for the Texas Mathematics 7 through 12 exam. And this video is gonna cover three things. What content will be covered on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts or themes that you'll see on the exam, and we're gonna look at a few practice questions. So keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle as we tour this study guide. First things first, Mathematics 7 through 12 is broken into seven sections called domains. Each domain covers one or more of the educator standards for this field. Inside each domain, you'll find multiple competencies. In this video, we'll touch on each domain. I'll be your mathematics tour guide, leading you on a journey to Mathematics 7 through 12. And spoiler alert, at the end of our tour, we'll encounter some practice questions, so make sure to pay close attention. Let's start by digging into domain one. Number concepts. This domain is about understanding and using numbers, number systems and their structure, operations and algorithms, quantitative reasoning, and technology appropriate to teach the statewide curriculum. This domain covers three competencies. Let's begin our adventure with complex numbers in a complex plane. It's one of the many subjects you'll need to know, so let's take a look. The complex plane is identical to your typical XY coordinate plane. The horizontal axis is called the real axis, and the vertical axis is the imaginary axis. The real part of a complex number is graphed on the horizontal axis, and the imaginary part is graphed on the vertical axis. For example, 2 minus 3i would be graphed as 2, negative 3. On tests, the axes in the complex plane may be labeled x and y, or i and r, but any point a, b in the complex plane represents a complex number a plus b, i. Okay, you guys, now our journey's about to get a little more complicated. Brace yourself. We're about to jump into the largest section of the exam tour, patterns and algebra. In domain two, you'll need to understand and use patterns, relations, functions, algebraic reasoning, analysis, and technology appropriate to teach the statewide curriculum. This domain covers six competencies. Wow. Let's take a trip to one of the important concepts of this domain, derivatives and trigonometric functions. The six trigonometric functions have distinct derivatives. Take a look and copy this down in your notes if needed. The rules for derivatives, such as the power rule and chain rule, can be applied to functions that include trigonometric functions. Let's try an example. If f of x equals tangent of 3x to the fifth power, find the derivative. First, rewrite f of x to show that the entire trigonometric function, tangent of 3x, is raised to the power of 5. Use the chain rule to work from the outside in. We'll address the exponent first by using the power rule. Take the exponent and make it the coefficient. Now subtract one from the original exponent to get the new exponent. That gives us five times tangent of three x to the fourth power. Next, take the derivative of the trigonometric function. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. According to the power rule, we multiply the derivative of the outer function by the derivative of the inner function. We now have five times tangent of three x to the fourth power times secant squared of three x. Finally, take the derivative of 3x. That's just 3. This also gets multiplied to the end of the derivative. We can simplify by multiplying the coefficient of 5 and 3. So the final answer would be 15 times the tangent of 3x to the fourth power times secant squared of 3x. Phew, now that was a trip. You're doing great on your tour, and congratulations. That was our fantastic voyage through the largest domain. Next up is geometry and measurement. This will cover geometry, spatial reasoning, measurement concepts, and principles and technology appropriate to teach the statewide curriculum. This is our second largest section, but luckily it only comes with four competencies. Let's first talk about angle postulates. We've got angle addition. If a point lies on the interior of an angle, that angle is the sum of the two smaller angles with the legs that go through the given point. Corresponding angles. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Parallel postulate. Given a line and a point not on that line, there exists a unique line through the point parallel to the given line. This section also covers concepts like angle theorems, including alternate exterior and interior angles, congruent complements and supplements, right angles, same side interior angles, and vertical angles. And all these definitions can be found in your 240 study guide. 
Okay, we've made it through the first half of our mathematical tour. From here on out, our domains get a bit smaller. Woohoo! Let's move on to probability and statistics, which also includes their applications and technology appropriate to teach the statewide curriculum. We're back down to three competencies in this section. Let's start with a definition. Dispersion is a method for describing how spread out or close together a set of data is. Dispersion can be described using range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. Now let's zero in on standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measurement of how spread out the data is from the mean. High is more spread out. To find the standard deviation, take the square root of the variance, sample or population, whichever you have. These formulas tell us how to find the standard deviation of a sample and a population. Take a moment to jot these down if you need to. Take a look at this graphic. It's a visual representation of dispersion when using standard deviation to compare and contrast two sets of data. The two samples here have the same mean, but different standard deviations. The orange sample has a standard deviation of 10, and the data is more compact. Meanwhile, the purple sample has a standard deviation of 50, and the data is much more spread out. Now, there are many more definitions in this domain, but let's keep on rolling into mathematical processes and perspectives. You'll need to understand and use mathematical processes to reason mathematically, to solve mathematical problems, make mathematical connections within and outside of mathematics, and to communicate mathematically. Whew, what a mathematical mouthful. Luckily, we've only got two competencies here. This is a bit different from our previous domains, and it's all about mathematical reasoning. Let's break down two forms of reasoning. Formal reasoning is used to answer questions and solve problems that have a single solution or right answer by using rules of logic and algorithms to reach a conclusion, like systematic methods that always produce a correct solution to a problem. So an example of formal reasoning would be, how much paint should we buy to paint the bathroom? Informal reasoning is used to answer questions and solve problems that are complex and open-ended, without a definitive solution, by using everyday knowledge to reach a conclusion. So an example of informal reasoning would be, do you support the city implementing a bike sharing program? Here's a helpful hint to sum this all up. Formal reasoning problems have a single right answer. Informal reasoning questions have more open-ended conclusions. Man, we have covered so much ground. And here we are at the very last domain in our tour, which is all about assessments. This domain includes our final two competencies. Assessment is more than just giving tests and taking grades. You should be familiar with important terms regarding types of assessment. Let's explore a few of those terms. A universal screener is used to gather data on all students. A diagnostic assessment, sometimes known as a pre-assessment, is used to identify students' specific strengths and weaknesses. Informal assessments happen throughout instruction, often through observation and signals from students. Formal assessments include things like quizzes, tests, and projects or writing assignments scored with some kind of scale or rubric. Finally, formative assessments are assessments for learning, and summative assessments are assessments of learning. Now, these aren't the only important terms in this domain, but understanding them is essential for passing this section. And that's it for the domains. You made it! Now, for the final stop on our tour, practice questions. I'm gonna go over six questions similar to those that you might see on the test. Ready? Here we go. We're starting with domain one, number concepts. Which quadrant would the sum of three plus two i and two minus three i be located in on the complex plane? Start by finding the sum of the complex numbers. Add the real part of the numbers, three plus two. Then add the imaginary parts of the numbers. Two i plus negative three i equals negative one i. To graph on the complex plane, start at the origin and move five right, then down one i. This reveals that the sum three plus two i plus two minus three i equals five minus i, which is located in quadrant four. That means D is our correct answer. Nice. Let's set our sights on domain two, patterns and algebra. What is the derivative of x squared times sine of x? All right, let's think back to this domain. Since the derivative of a product is needed, the product rule must be used. Therefore, C is the correct answer. If the following statement is false, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, the two interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, which of the following statements must also be false? 
Helpful hint, if the two interior angles are not supplementary, the alternate interior angles will not be congruent. That means there's only one answer, A. Wow, you're already halfway there. Keep up the great work. The end of our journey is in sight as we enter domain four, probability and statistics. Which of the following is true for a small standard deviation? Think back to what we know about standard deviation. A large standard deviation indicates data that are widely spread, which means that a small standard deviation indicates the data are closely grouped around the mean. Therefore, A is the correct answer. Now on to domain five, mathematical processes and perspectives. Mrs. Whelan is teaching geometric shapes and wants to use informal reasoning questions for discussion. What question is best to start with? Remember the definition of informal reasoning. Only one of these answers is both an open-ended question and allows for real-world connections. And that answer is B. Okay, just one more, you've got this. All we have left is domain six, mathematical learning, instruction, and assessment. A teacher is monitoring her class while the students are involved in a group activity, exploring the size of angles in a set of triangles. She moves from group to group, pausing and watching the group dynamics. What the teacher is doing can best be described as what? We need to remember a few definitions here. The teacher is listening and watching as she informally assesses student understanding of the concept angle measures and triangles. That means the correct answer is A. And that's it. You've officially completed our whole tour of the Texas Mathematics 7 through 12 exam. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has hundreds of practice questions? If you really want to make sure you're prepared for the Texas Mathematics 7 through 12 exam, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It's got hours of videos so you can watch or listen while doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. It has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.